welcome to the Nancy Grandquist podcast. I'm so excited to be hosting this podcast. Today, we're going to talk about redefining beautiful and woman as the image bearer of God. I'm so excited to be here in Canberra, Australia with my fabulous longtime friend, Sue Downs, her extraordinary daughter, Ruth Drew, and gorgeous daughters, Sarah and Hannah. So glad you guys are here. Thank yeah, you. Thank you for great. having us. Mm. So happy to be this here. episode of Redefining Beautiful and Woman as the Image Bearer of God, we're going to look at the second declaration, which reads, Therefore, my identity is shaped by my Creator, who loves me and created me with intrinsic value and worth. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows right well. What a powerful declaration. Powerful. Very powerful. That we as women, and we being the image bearers of God, that we have this revelation of our great value and what it means to be loved by God. And Hannah, you are... Um, going into the medical field, and we're so excited about your life, but I just ask you to comment a little bit on the medical side of this when it says fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, I just want to touch on the, the fearfully part um, because it's talking about how humans and us all women we're talking about today are created in this amazing, wonderful way that's so unique. It's we're actually um, looking at cell biology in our lectures at the moment. And in my lecture just today, um, our lecture was talking about the organelles of the cell, how everything functions. You know, biologists can tell you how everything works. But when they're talking about, um, you know, the origins of life, she just said today that no one really knows. People are still debating this, you know. And it's so – everything is just – put together so well so perfectly once you start studying it how everything just clicks together all the processes all these systems function beautifully together and there's a verse um romans 1 that says they know the truth about god because he has made it obvious to them and i think that just the fact that we're all so unique but so perfectly functioning you know perfectly made all these different um parts of our our bodies are just made so wonderfully that that's just a testament to God's creation, how he doesn't make mistakes. We're all um, made in this this awe and, you know, that's what it means when it's saying fearfully and, and wonderfully made. Beautiful. Yes, um, Christians believe. I think Christians get it, the intrinsic mm. value of every human being because we are created in God's image. Yeah. And um, thank you for that, Hannah, because manhood, womanhood, we matter because the creator decided that we should matter, that we would be created in his image. God's design expressed female, expressed male. And uh, the wonderful thing, and I love this because you were just in your biology class today. Yeah. And, and you hear all the debate. We don't know where it came from. We don't know how this happened. But it's so amazing because God's design is perfect mm -hmm. and it never changes. Yes. Mm -hmm. In one of those versions of the Bible, it says wonderfully complex. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I really think that maybe God has made women and man that way so that man and people cannot understand. Mm. Because it, it makes us in awe of his handiwork. Mm. Yes. Because if we could explain it. Mm. That would be another deal, wouldn't it? Mm. We cannot explain. Mm. We cannot. And and uh, taking us back to Genesis 127, so God created man, humanity, in his own image. Male and female, he created them. Mm -hmm. That is not so difficult to get. That's right. And and I think I feel so sorry for these professors that <laughs> you know they're <laughs> trying to figure out, they're trying to figure out a way all of this happened. But it's it's just so 
brilliantly yeah. put Something. in his word. Mm-hmm. Um, Ruth, I'm, I, I'm so fascinated by this story that you told me about. It's, is she a, an Australian woman? This yes, woman? she's an Australian woman. Can you just tell us about this? This story is just heart-wrenching. Mm-hmm. about this beautiful young woman. And, and just uh, when we're talking about intrinsic value and beauty, mm-hmm. I, I think this story is amazing. So just tell us. Yeah, so Sister Grenquist and I were talking the other day about this topic and the name Turia Pitt came up and most Australians would know the name Turia Pitt because of what a wonderful inspiration she's become to so many people. And the background is that in 2011, she was competing. She was a marathon runner already. She was competing in a 100 kilometer. I don't know what that translates to in miles. <laughs> Not quite sure either. 100 kilometer. Sounds like a long ways to me, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> it's like a 120, maybe 100 kilometer ultra marathon through the Western Australia Kimberley region. Um, and that's when she got caught in large bushfires. And there was nowhere to there, there was nowhere to go. So she just said. just a second, let yeah. me let me get this, Ruth. Yeah. She was in a marathon. Yeah. She was out running. It was yeah. it was happening. Like she yes. was in this marathon. She's out there in the bush and gets caught in a bush fire. Yes. So there's no mm. town near no. that they can put out the fire, mm. or no place for her to go. Mm-hmm. Is that that's correct? Right. That's, okay. That's correct. She actually says there was nowhere to go. Nowhere to and go. And so the only thing that she could do was try and outrun the bushfire wow. which she she was not able to and she sustained uh burns to 65 percent of her body um, massive burns massive burns yeah mm-hmm. she was not expected to survive she was airlifted out of there and the amazing part is is what came from that you know it's amazing enough that she was running uh what did you look up 60 mile um ultra marathon but to have gone through this experience and to come out the other side um, and be and have taken her her future into her own hands, if you know what I mean. Like she wasn't going to let this uh, get her down. She wasn't going to devastating. Yeah, it wasn't. She wasn't going to be overcome by this terrible yeah. thing that had happened. She's to her. not going to be defeated. Yeah. That's so right. she went on to be um, sell books about um, a lot of different topics. Mum can talk about those sorts of things that she went on to do, um, uh, present lectures about um, not masking ourselves. And so she's actually, one of the things she's very renowned for is, you know, many people who are victims of fire mask themselves, they cover themselves up. But she was very much believing that she shouldn't cover herself up and she should allow herself to be seen. Wow, there, there's yeah. a powerful, right now, as you're saying this, mm. there's such a, pow- there's the symbolism of this. Mm. Because I think as women, when things happen to us, we feel like we have to cover it up. Mm-hmm. Like we're embarrassed or, or we need to, you know, oh, people can't know this about me. Mm-hmm. Or, but for this woman, what's her name again? Turia. Turia. For this woman to be so transparent Mm-hmm. so real and raw like mm-hmm. this is me and this is what happened to me mm-hmm. but i'm not going to try to hide mm-hmm. behind something yeah. i'm going to make this something powerful mm-hmm. and yeah. i'm going to turn it into triumph this is going to yeah. be the anthem of my life mm-hmm. and i think as beautiful women of god that we should step into that place mm-hmm. regardless of what's happened to us mm-hmm. Let me just say her scars, if you look at on the internet, are horrific Yeah. to her face, her arms, her legs. Her scarring is horrific. Yet everybody addresses this woman as a beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and Sue, tell us about, or maybe Ruth, I can't remember. One of you were, were talking about when she decided she married, she was going to have babies. Mm. She, she could not. Married. She could yeah. not have the pregnancies like normal. Something. Yeah. So um, although I I did have a look and it doesn't say it in her story. Okay. There's not a lot about how she was able to get pregnant. But I have looked at other burn victim stories, um, and she Turia Pitt did go on to have two children, which was an absolute miracle. 
Wow. Um, but because of all the scar tissue around their st- their stomach, burn victims have to have procedures done because scar tissue doesn't stretch. Right. You know, so as as your pregnant oh, belly is growing, true. there's procedures that have to be done before you even fall pregnant. And I don't know if Taria Pitt, I cannot say that she definitely went yeah. through this, but I can right. imagine that she would have had to have procedures done to to stretch her stomach and to um, have what are they called where you put the skin uh, skin grafts mm-hmm. on and right. things like mm-hmm. that just just to be able to lead that normal life that's and and have incredible. that dream of having children yeah so so when we look at the intrinsic value um, Sarah, you you went through, and I read some of your thoughts. They were so brilliant. And um, when we met, we talked about society and the media, mm-hmm. and what pressure women are under, because there's there's this thing like, well, I I need to be this, I need to do that, I, you know. And but then when we look at this scripture, that there's just we can rest. And Sarah, I want you to talk to us about a couple of things that that you just presented to, to us. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. So, like, defining beautiful is so hard because the world standards are always changing. And so if you look at the word beautiful by the world standards, you know, it's never the same. And even in, like, different countries, different places around the world, the standards are all different. And so if you are going to measure yourself by the world standards or societal standards, then you'll be met with confusion and you'll never actually feel beautiful. Are you talking about social media being the the main contributor to this thinking? Yeah, that's definitely, um, yeah, that's definitely a main contributor, especially like young girls, you know, going on Instagram or whatever and seeing all these um, celebrities and models and they look a certain way, but a lot of them have been, like, edited to the nines. Like, Mm. (laughs) it's crazy. Well, even, Sarah, don't you think in the movies? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just out there that is, I mean, it's on the billboards. It's Mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's just in our face. Go ahead, continue. Yeah, it's it's always changing. So if you look at, like, standards um, from, like, 1960s compared to like now it's so different Mm -hmm. like even like the different it girls um across time they look so different to each other and yeah so you just don't measure your worth by societal standards are you talking about measuring your worth or your beauty well your beauty and your worth Mm. because um so let's talk about that yeah. Your your does your does your worth interpret your beauty or no. No. Um beautiful, you know, that's that can be anything. Like, you know, you can look at um something and that's an object that's not a person. You can say, Oh, that's beautiful or mm. you can say, Oh, this music is beautiful. But your worth should not be defined by how beautiful that you think you are. What you look like on the outside. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yes, so, so when we're defining or redefining beautiful, one of the things I think is so important, and Sue, you can help me on this, but that our character, mm-hmm. our, our, that is our worth, our Hannah? I was just going to say when Sarah was talking about how this um, definition of beauty is always changing in society. You can never meet the standards. I think that um, the definition of someone who's beautiful on the inside, you know, biblically, that's what it's talking about. It says beauty is fleeting, but Mm -hmm. our attitude and our character, generally, I think, throughout the years that stayed the same. You know, a beautiful person is kind, a beautiful person is selfless, a beautiful person is giving, whatever. That that definition has stayed the same. And and, th- that and we wear that on our faces, don't exactly. we? Exactly, yeah, that's mm. true. And I think that, you know, we can try our best to look beautiful 
And, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look beautiful. But as Christians, we, we are here to serve God and we're here to serve others. And I think that you can't really serve someone by looking pretty. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But you can serve someone yeah. by being beautiful on the inside, by mm-hmm. sharing your kindness and your loving nature and that kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Hannah, it's, it's, that is so profound and, and I think especially for women across the board, all ages, I think I re- my mother was one of the most beautiful women. I think she was yes. one of the most beautiful women that I had ever seen or known. Mm-hmm. When she was 88 years old, she she had this radiance and this yeah. beauty. It, it, mm-hmm. You couldn't buy it in a bottle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It That's was right. it was the the beauty of godliness and the beauty of wholesomeness and 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 her life that was filled with the word of god and his presence yeah. mm. and um, i just think it's we all can have that we all can know that you know mm-hmm. i was thinking today about the word matchless and i looked up uh, the ma- a matchless girl. What is the meaning of a matchless girl? Having no equal. A woman of matchless beauty. A, an extraordinary kind of beauty. And as the reflection of God, as the image bearer of God, I think there is a matchless beauty in the women of God. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't think sure. that the, there's not even a way to compare it mm-hmm. to the world today. It's so fresh, so beautiful, so transparent. Mm. Sue, talk to us. Well, I just wrote down here, our eyes are the window of our soul. Mm. Mm. So like what Hannah mentioned about being gentle, being kind, we reflect that in our eyes. Mm. People can see that. You know, you can... Beauty is not something that we... um, Yes, we all want to present the best we can. Who who doesn't? Mm -hmm. We all do. That's Mm -hmm. just a natural thing. But if we have a disposition that is negative, we can change that. We can choose to be more positive in our attitude. Mm -hmm. And we can choose to be more gentle. It doesn't matter if you're raised on a farm like I was, you know, running around chasing cows with (laughs) riding tractors and bringing in the hay and all the rest of it. But, you know, I'm a feminine girl. Mm -hmm. I'm a feminine woman. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter, you know, you can still do those things and be feminine. But all of what we do shows forth in our features. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody is grumpy... You don't need two <laughs> minutes to be in their presence and you know they're grumpy. You can yeah. see it on their face. Mm-hmm. So as the image bearer of God, I think we should be reflecting that image. Mm-hmm. And if you look at what God is, what God is love, and then if you look at all the aspects of love, we sh- that's what we re- reflect. It's mm-hmm. nothing to do with how God put hair on our head whether it be black blonde or brindle who cares it makes no difference really mm. yeah it's what god it's has true. made us to be his image bearer yes mm-hmm. yeah mm. for sure and we have an inherent value as the women mm. of the image bearer of god we we have this mission yeah that God has put in our life. And um, I, I think that as women, we're valuable because God created us. He created us. Um, you know, we're sitting at this table, and it's incredibly how different we all are sitting here at this table. Mm-hmm. But yet we are so the same because we are anointed by God. Mm-hmm. We are loved by God. We are called by God. We're chosen by God. And so, and, and you know, I'm not saying we don't have bad days because we are women. Yeah. And, and we're emotional. And we, but in all of that, even that, we know for sure 
that we are fearfully and wonderfully made mm -hmm. and shaped according to his plan and his purpose for our lives. Sarah, you have something you want to add to this? Well, it says in the Bible that, you know, we are worth more than rubies and pearls. And, you know, back in Jesus' day, rubies and pearls was like the extremely pricey, you know. And the fact that God is saying, like, we are worth more than that, like, that's just so nice to read. Mm -hmm. We need a reminder. Yeah, I, I think sometimes we, we need to look in the mirror, Sarah, Hannah, Ruth, grandmother, Towns. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we have to look in the mirror and say, girl, you are worth more than diamonds, jewels, mm -hmm. the finest. Girl, you are matchless because you are the image bearer of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we know when we are doing the things that God has called us to do, we feel good about ourselves because mm -hmm. we are knowing that we are doing what God wants us yes. to do. We are his image bearer. Yes. If I am loving those who are unlovely, those who are what we would consider down and out, and if I can pour out my or give from my hand to them love somehow, I'm feeling good. So it's not about the way we look, it's about what comes from the inside. So true. Yeah. That's where we, my soul knows right well That's that I'm says. God's image bearer when I'm doing those things. Intrinsic mm. and incredibly valuable and worth. That's what we have. Sarah? Yeah. Um, so Jesus, you know, he thinks that we are his masterpiece. And I always think about like, you know, artists when they create a masterpiece, they wouldn't want someone to, you know, come over and like draw all over it or something sure. if they did this beautiful painting. Mm -hmm. And God sees us as his masterpiece and he doesn't want us to come in thinking, you know, we're not enough and to just change ourselves mm -hmm. and change the way that we look so that we can please, you know, whoever People we don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah literally. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Mm. It's so, that's powerful, yes. Mm. Absolutely. We are his masterpiece. Hannah, anything else that you would like to add to that? Um, I think also, adding on from what Sarah said about um, a masterpiece, when... When people come, like she said, draw, drawing on this masterpiece, thinking, you know, they can do better, something needs to change. I think that for every person, um, like the quote says, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? Mm -hmm. For every person, they view beauty as something different. They think something, this should change, or let's tweak this part, no, don't do that, let's change this part. You can never, you can't please everyone, yeah. you know? And so what's the point of trying to change yourself and trying to become this this new person when, like Sarah was saying before, you know, two years from now, the the standard of beauty is going to be completely different. Or even two minutes from then, mm -hmm. someone else is going to walk along and they're not going to think that that's beautiful, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one, one, of my, one of my, I don't know, candy sticks that I talk to Richard and my husband of 54 years, I get on this once in a while, is um, I don't understand why men get up in the morning, they take a shower, mm -hmm. they put a comb through their hair, they brush their teeth, get dressed, they're perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a woman feels like she's got to spend so much time mm -hmm. figuring out her face, her hair, her everything. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I think that the culture, the American culture, I don't know about Australian, but I think that our culture has done that, put pressure on yep. mm -hmm. women yeah. that mm -hmm. what you said, Sarah, you're not enough. We're not yeah. enough. So we, we got to doctor up. We got to do this. We got to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. when, when we really do look into the face of God and we see him mm -hmm. reflected back mm -hmm. and we see ourselves reflected back in him. Mm -hmm. And there's a peace that comes. There's, there's a, 
I don't know, my soul knows yes, right I was well. I thinking the same thing. <laughs> yep. Sometimes I have to tell my head, my soul knows it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Look in the mirror and remind yourself. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about um, what you were saying then, talking about redefining beautiful and what the world says is beauty is only skin deep mm. Mm. and how to dispel that myth that beauty is more than what's on your skin. Mm. It's It yeah. comes from your heart. Hmm. Um, so do you have anything we could just add on to this as we close? It's a difficult subject because of the social pressure that's put upon you. It starts from a very young age. It's a very difficult thing to come to grips with the fact that you are enough and not, you know, not be intimidated mm -hmm. by, the, by the pressure of the world. But I think if we could just really have that close relationship with the Lord where we know that something is wrong, not with our outward, because we can't change that. Mm -hmm. But if we are portraying something that's not Christ-like inside, if we could change that by the power of God, then I know we would be more satisfied with who we present as. Mm. That's so good. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Mm. And just having that self-confidence as well. Once you, you've you accepted, you know, this is who I am and I'm going to be confident about this and I'm going to wear it proudly, then the rest doesn't matter. What other people think of you, what society says, it doesn't matter anymore. Well, it's the woman that you talked about, Ter mm -hmm. Terry Terry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, that's kind of the concept we're talking about mm. here. Is like she has accepted. This is it. Yeah. And uh, and I think it's so important for we as women and the image bearers of God that we support each other. Yeah. And that we we let those women around our lives. I think it's really important that we. We just say, I love you, and you're, you're precious, and you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think we need to say those affirming words mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. For sure. to, to each other. And, and in closing, I just wanted to tell this story. I was in London, and I was, we'd gone to this store. We loved to go there. Not that we really buy anything in the store, but we just love to go there and visit. And Nice things. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and on the way out, um, I, I saw this woman standing at the perfume counter, and my husband was joining some friends, and I said, I'll be out there in a moment. And I walked up to this woman. I could only see a, just a portion of her face. But I walked up to her in Selfridges in London, and I just gently put my hand on her shoulder, and I said, excuse me, but I just had to tell you, you are so beautiful. And when she turned her face full to me, the other side of her face was completely a mass of burn scars. Mm -hmm. And when she looked at me, a tear started coming out of the side of her eyes. And she said, thank you so much for your words to me. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a gift to our lives to be able to love people, affirm people, and remind them of their intrinsic value, no matter what they've gone through, no matter what they look like, no matter their name, that we pour out our love and we pour out our care on people and affirm them mm -hmm. of their intrinsic value as women, the image bearers of God. Mm -hmm. One last wrap up, anyone? Sarah. I was going to say that, you know, you were saying that we have to remind um, the women around us how beautiful they are. We also need to be careful how we talk to ourselves because, like, I saw this thing that was like, never say something to yourself that you wouldn't say to your friend. So you would never tell your friend, you know, they are um, ugly or you would never tell your friend that, you know, they can't do this and they can't do that and they're worthless. You would never say that to your friend. Mm -hmm. And so why would you say it to yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. And it really takes root in your mind when you start saying those things to yourself that you really start believing it. So, yeah, just being careful with how you talk to yourself. 
That's amazing, and we're, that's another declaration that we're going to talk about later on, but the power of our words. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Sarah. That, that's absolutely true and so amazing. Anyone else? I think just to add on to what Sarah was saying, we're talking about taking off this value of um, what you look like and putting it, focusing on, you know, your, your character. And I think when we are complimenting people and we are showing love to other people to compliment, you know, their smile, compliment how kind they are, compliment yeah. how, how positive they are, that kind of thing, instead of just focusing on the outer, outer, outer. Mm. One thing, having uh, four girls... One thing that was very um, and that one I was boy <laughs> that I was very aware of, particularly with the girls, is that when I'm talking to the girls, I mean, my girls are all stunning. They are, yes, they are. But as they're growing up, not to say you look so pretty, you know, not to make that the focus for little girls as mm-hmm. they're growing up. That yep. you look beautiful today. Oh, your hair looks lovely today. You know, it's, but focus on things like oh. What books are you reading at the moment? So true. You know, yes. um, what, what do you enjoy doing? What hobbies do you have? So when you're coming across a little girl, rather than, like we notice what they look like on the outside, but don't make that their focus mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Be, so, yeah, so try good. and focus on something else. Developing like, character. Yes. Yeah. Developing yeah. their yeah. character. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Ruth. I'm so excited that we have had this time together. And uh, I just believe this is going to be a blessing to a lot of women of all ages. And um, I pray that the words that have been spoken will minister to people and will help to bring revelation of who we are in him and the mission of God, that we carry out that mission with purpose and great love to help those in our lives. God bless you all. Thank you so much. And before we finish, I just like to say God does not make junk mm-hmm. or mistakes. Or mistakes. <laughs> there you go. That's a truth. Thank you so much, Sue. Love you all.